In this video, we're going to have a look at some SAT prep for the math section in the year 2021. I'm here to help you to succeed on your math exam and get you entrance to college, try to get you that score of 800 points on the SAT. That's coming up today on High Peak Education. What's going on everybody? Thank you very much for watching. So here we have many SAT math problems presented. They're examples, I talk them through. I also go through things kind of quickly so that you see what kind of speed or pace or how rapid you need to do things in order to be successful on the SAT math exam. So we're gonna be covering lots of things today. Algebra, geometry, functions. We're gonna be covering systems of equations, graphs, analyzing slope, analyzing y-intercept, all kinds of things. I mean, and some of these things are gonna be maybe a little bit more difficult than were in your math classes because they require a little bit of cleverness or they require just a little bit of a trick. So let's get into today's video. We'll have this reference material on the section that you don't have a calculator. So you have the formulas for area and circumference of a circle, rectangle, triangle, Pythagorean theorem, special right triangles, volume of a rectangular prism, volume of cylinder, volume of a sphere, volume of a right circular cone, and volume of a right rectangular base pyramid. And then we know that a circle adds up to 360, radians and an arc of a circle is 2 pi, and a triangle, the interior angles add to 180 degrees, right? That should all be reference information you've heard before. And by the way, I'm gonna recommend even today, we work through this kind of quickly, because in this section, you're only supposed to have 25 minutes with no calculator. So let's try to work through this somewhat quickly. So x minus one over three equals k, k equals three. What's the value of x? So let's see, I fill in what for k? Three. Mm -hmm. Three. And I times both sides by what? By three. Three to get rid of these three. So we get x minus one equals nine. That's going to be x equals 10, right? right? By the way, I don't necessarily recommend you write x equals 10 because that's going to waste time. You only have 25 minutes. Just go ahead and circle that and keep moving and bubble all your answers at the end. I recommend you do all your calculations on the paper, but then bubble them all at the end. So here's number two, which says, for i equals square root of negative one, what's the sum of seven plus three i plus negative eight plus nine i? So we should add the what parts together and what parts together? I don't know. The real parts and the imaginary parts. These are real and these are imaginary. So that's gonna be negative one plus 12i. Our friend Armand did something, number three. He sent M text messages each hour for five hours. And Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? So let's think, Armand is sending five text messages for five hours, so that's five times M. But then Tyrone is sending P text messages for four hours, so four times P. That'd be this. Okay, so don't guess. Try to really think about this, okay? Remember, this exam, you have to pay money for it. And like it's, um, how do you say, like, uh, can I help you get to college? We have our friend Kathy here in number four, and she's got some repairs and things to do. Okay, so she's a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of the day can be estimated with the equation P equals 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. 
what is the meaning of the 108 in this equation? So this is what type of an equation, by the way? Yeah, good, it's a linear equation. And remember that the slope would be what? Neg negative 23. So think about that. That's negative 23 means she gets rid of 23 phones per day. In other words, she finishes her service on 23 phones per day. Then what's the meaning of 108? Well, 108 has the same units as P, the phones, so she should start each week with 108 phones to fix. Not 108 days, not 108 per hour or per day, because it's the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is going to be the start value value at d equals zero, which is day zero, right? Right. Day zero. Says x squared y minus three y squared plus five x y squared minus negative x squared y plus three x y squared minus three y squared. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Well, hopefully, you know that you can distribute this minus to the second set of parentheses, right? Right. So wouldn't this be x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5xy squared, but then it's going to be plus x squared y minus, and let's put it over here, minus 3xy squared plus 3y squared. Now, when we add these up, I think that these double up, that's 2x squared y, these cancel, and then here you get plus 2xy squared. 2x squared y plus 2xy squared, I think that's going to be choice C. And we have a, we're talking to a pediatrician, and we're modeling how a boy grows. So here's number six. The pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age a in years between the ages of two and five. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of the boy's height each year? Well, I think we talked about this before. This is the starting value. And then this right here is the increase. Now the increase is due to the slope. And the slope should be three inches per year. So that'd be three, right? If a over b equals two, what is the value of four b over a? It's four b over a. So we first need to turn this upside down, reciprocal. That's b over a equals what? What's the reciprocal of two? One half. So then four b over a, multiply both sides by four, you should get two. See how we got that? Yes. So here we have a system of equations. So two equations, two unknowns. And this is a linear system, right? Right. What is the solution to the system of linear equations above? Well, I'm going to recommend you would use the elimination method. Because if you use the elimination method, suppose I multiply this equation by 3. We would have 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. That's the above equation. Then we're going to have negative 3x plus 6y equals now negative 19 times 3. We have to do that by hand because we don't have a calculator on this section. So negative 20 times 3 would have been negative 60. So we're going to be 3 less than that. So that's negative 57. You see that I'm getting at? So we add these together. These cancel. 4 plus 6 is 10y. And then I think this adds to negative, let's see, that's 80. So then divide by 10. That's y equals negative 8. So we're thinking it's this, right? Because this is the only one with negative 8. But let's plug that back into this equation. 2 times negative 8 um, minus x equal negative 19. That's negative 16 minus x equals negative 19. That's negative x equals negative 3. That's x is 3. So yes, this is the correct answer. g of x is ax squared plus 24. For the function g defined above, a is constant, and g of 4 equals 8. 
what is the value of g of negative 4? Well, it turns out that g of 4 we know to be 8. But that's also plugging in 4 for x. So that's a times 4 squared plus 24. So that's 8 equals, now 4 squared is 16. That's 16a 16 plus 24. Subtract 24 from both sides. 8 minus 24 is negative 16 equals 16a. That means a equals negative 1. And then now once you have a, that is not the answer. Because they are not looking for a. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is a very common ghost answer. You find the value of a, you think you're done, you're not done yet. See, it's, look what, answer the question. What is the value of g of negative 4? So g of negative 4, now we know what a is. So we can do negative of negative 4 squared plus 24. Do you see that? Yeah. So that'll give us our answer. So negative 4 squared is 16. So negative 16 plus 24, that gives 8. Okay? Now, by the way, you could have also seen that it was 8 right there. And the thing is, this is a parabola that is symmetric to the y-axis because it's up here at 20 it's up here at 24 so here's 24 uh so hang on let me let me do this way okay that's what i meant to do sorry sorry for that okay so this parabola opens downward okay so given the parabola opens downward because the a value is negative at negative four you're getting um eight so let me stretch this out a little bit sorry uh, sorry, this way. There we go. So, at negative 4, you're getting 8 right there. But you see that at, uh, that's at 4. But at negative 4, you're also getting 8. Do you see what I'm saying? Because it's, yeah. sym it's symmetric to the y-axis. So, if you were really quick and clever, you could have also just done it that way. But this is, uh, this is another way to do it. Find a, then find g of negative 4. We have b equals 2.35 plus 0.25x, c equals 1.75 plus 0.40x. The equations above, b and c, represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively, x weeks after July 1st, during the last summer. What was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price of chicken? So we should set the equations equal to each other. So that's going to be 2.35, because the price is equal, right? Plus right. 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.40x. Now, to make this a lot easier, multiply the whole equation by 100. That gets rid of the decimals. 235 plus 25x equals 175 plus 40x. See what I'm getting at? That's a lot easier. Let's subtract 25x from both sides to get x by us. Let's also subtract 175. Okay, so when we do all that, on the right-hand side, we just get 15x, because that's 40 minus 25, and then x. And then uh, 235 minus 175, I think that's 60. Divide by 15. Remember, you don't have a calculator. The numbers should come out nice. x equals 4. So if x equals 4, that's 4 weeks. But then remember, answer the question, what was the price? So you need to plug in 4 to one of these equations. So let's plug it into b. b should be 2.35 plus 0.25 times 4. Well, 0.25, that's a fourth times 4. This right here is just the number 1. So this is 3.35, and that's going to be here. So $3.35. Go with that? Remember, you got to work kind of fast through some of these. A line in the xy plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1 seven. Which of the following points lies on that line? So you can imagine that it's basically this sort of thing. And it has a very small slope, 1 seven. So it's going to be like this. So that's going to be rise 1 and run seven, right? 
So I don't I don't think zero uh, seven is on that because it goes through the origin. That's zero zero, right? And then would one seven be on it? Now, if you go one to the right, which would be up here at seven. No, because this is uh, if you go uh, one to the right, you've only gone one seven up. Turns out you need to run seven all the way to there to get up here to y equals one. So that's why this is a ghost answer. Seven seven is also incorrect because this line does not have a slope of one. So 14 two, that works. Why 14 two? Because you can know, go out here to 14 for x and then up here, y is gonna be two. Do you see that? Yeah. So that's correct. Expect a very similar question to that on the exam. I, which of the following is equivalent to this complex fraction? Well, notice that we need to multiply by x plus 2 times x plus 3. Why? Because that's the LCD. That's the least common denominator of what's going on down here. Now, upstairs, what we'll get is we'll get, we have to FOIL this out. So it's going to be x squared plus now x times 3, 2 times x, that's 5x, plus 2, to, 2 times 3 is 6, over, now you can really be careful, when you take these two times this guy, you just get x plus 3, because you eliminated the x plus 2s. The other one, you get x plus 2, because you, you canceled out the x plus 3. So you should get x squared plus 5x plus 6, that's the same, over 2x plus 5. So that should be this answer. See how that works? Let me know if it doesn't make sense. Stop me if it doesn't. If 3x minus y equals 12, what is the value of 8x over 2y? This, is re this requires a little bit of cleverness. You may say, how can you get 3x and y in this thing? Well. 8 to the x is the same thing as 2 cubed raised to the x. 2 is the prime number that is 2 to the third is 8 over 2 to the y. Notice we can multiply these, so we have 2 to the 3x over 2 to the y. But that's going to be 2 to the 3x minus y. But wait a minute, now it makes me very happy because 3x minus y is 12. So this is 2 to the 12th, and that's our answer. So you had to write 8 as 2 to the 3rd. x was its power. You multiplied powers. Because you're dividing, you could subtract the powers. And 3x minus y was waiting for you. <laughs> that you should write down your answer, but then mark it in bubbling. If t is greater than 0, t squared minus 4 equals 0, what's the value of t? That'd be t squared equals 4, t equals plus and minus the square root of 4, which is plus and minus 2. So the thing is, we only want positive 2 for the answer. Because we're told t is greater than 0. By the way, one important thing on the SAT exam, they only ever want one answer. Not two answers, only one answer. You follow what I'm saying? Only give them one answer. Always. So x plus y equals negative 9. x plus 2, 2 y equals negative 25. According to the system of equations above, what's the value of x? I would just subtract this equation from this one. So the x is going to go away. That's going to be as negative y equals, that's negative 9 plus 25. So that's 16. So y is negative 16. But then once you have negative 16, x minus 16 equals negative 9, okay? So x should equal 7. One is x degrees, and the sine of x degrees is 4 over 5. We want to know uh, what is the cosine of 90 degrees minus x degrees, okay? So draw a right triangle, and we know that here's x degrees, and we know that opposite is 4, and it and hypotenuse is 5. That's what sine is. This is 90 degrees minus x degrees. So notice that the cos of that is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's just going to be, well, 4 over 5. 
because that's what the cos of 90 degrees minus x is. A equals 5 square root of 2, and 2a equals 2 square root of x. What's the value of x? Well, if I take 2 times a, I've got 10 square root of 2 equals square root of 2x. I can square both sides, square both sides. That's 100 times 2 equals 2x. Well, the 2s would cancel. x is 100. Done. OK, so that's how quickly you need to kind of work to kind of get this stuff done on the no calculator section. OK, so here's our friend John. He's running uh, different speeds as part of his training. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing? I'm thinking it's here, because this is an increase followed by a decrease. So I think that that's 40 to 50, then 50 to 60. So that's 40 to 60. I hope you can see that. Okay. If y equals kx and k is a constant, and y is 24 when x is 6, what's the value of y when x equals 5? Well, the thing is, the y-intercept is equal to 0. So the thing is, k is the slope. So if k is the slope, then notice that the slope is going to be the rise of y, which is 24, over the run of x, which is 6. 6 goes into 24 three times. x is 5, then y should be 15. I hope you can see that, because we're going to rise 15 while we run 5 says, in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel lines, and S and T are parallel. If the measure of angle 1 is 35 degrees, what's the measure of angle 2? Well, this angle has to be the same as this angle, has to be the same as this angle. So this, I think, needs to be supplementary. That needs to be 180 degrees minus 35 degrees. 180 degrees minus 30 degrees is 150, so this would be 145. So there we go. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? Is 10 more than 14. So 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. So that's 24, right? That's just 10 more than 14. We need to find 8x. Well, let's subtract 16. So that's going to be 4x is 8. Now remember, answer the question. Don't solve for x. They want 8x, right? Multiply both sides by 2. Yes. That's 8x is 16. So that's correct. Notice if you'd solve for x, x would have been 2, and that would have been incorrect. Don't give them x if they're asking for 8x. So which of the following best shows a strong negative association between D and T. In other words, T is going up, but then D is going down. Which one would that be? This one, do you see that? Because the trend line would be this way. Do you see that? Yeah. If D is going down, T is going up, or for that matter, if D is going up, T is going down, right? So that's what this says. One decagram equals 10 grams. A thousand milligrams equals one gram. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in a two decagram container? Okay, so first off, we have a two decagram container. That's going to be uh, 20 grams. But wait a minute, one gram is a thousand milligrams. So we need to times this bad boy by 20. So that would be 20,000 milligrams in 20 grams. So 20, you gotta be careful with the zeros, 20,000, right? Rooftop solar panel installations in five cities. We have city A, B, C, D, and E. And it looks like there's a certain number. Um, the number of rooftop solar panel installations in five cities shown in the graph above. There's a number. In the total number of installations is 27,500. What's an appropriate label for the vertical axis of this graph? Now think about this. If we have 27,500, this is nine for the maximum value. Notice the max is nine. Are we talking tens, hundreds, thousands, or 10,000s? 
Well, if this was 10 thousands, then there'd be 90,000, but that's bigger than this, 27,000, so that's incorrect. But then the max is gonna be 9,000 if we do letter C, but you see that 9,000, 5,000, 6,000, 4,000, 3,500, that should probably give us 27,000. For what value of n is n minus one in absolute value plus one equal to zero? Well, do you notice that this is always gonna be positive or zero? If you add one, is that ever gonna give you zero? Never! Never, yeah. Right? If you have a positive number or zero and you add one, you'll never have zero. Let's see, A equals 1,052 plus 0 0.8 T. The speed of the sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relationship between A, which is the speed of the sound wave, in feet per second, and T, the air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So as the temperature is higher, sound propagates faster. That's what we know. Okay, which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed of the sound wave? It turns out we need to solve for T. So we need to find the temperature in terms of the speed. Well, it's A minus 1,052, but then we need to divide by 1.08 to get T. So that's gonna be, let's see, I think it's gonna be this one. But be careful, this one's a ghost answer because the minus is in the wrong direction, right? So be careful with that. At which of the following air temperatures will the speed of a sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? Okay, so in other words, we want A to be 1,000. So we need 1,000 equals 1,052 plus 1.08T. So if we subtract, we're going to have negative 52 equals 1.08T. So T should be negative 52 over 1.08. I can do that in my calculator kind of fast. So that's negative 52 over 1.08. Okay, so that's negative 48 point something. And that's this choice. This inequality. So which of the following is not a solution to this inequality? Okay, we could just plug them in, but if it's easy enough to solve, I would solve for x. So let's subtract 3x from both sides. So we've got negative 5 greater than or equal to x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. That's negative 2 greater than or equal to x, which is really probably even more easily read. Keep the inequality pointed towards the x. That's x has to be less than or equal to negative two. Now remember, the word not is used here. So any value less than negative two is a solution or equal to negative two. But that means this, this, and this are all less than or equal to negative two. So that means this is the answer, negative one, correct? So that's one way to solve it. Again, you could just plug in all the values, that'll work, but it's a little bit less efficient in my opinion. Based on the histogram above, the fall of the following, which is the closest to the average, that is arithmetic mean, the number of seeds per apple. So it turns out this is like a weighted mean. So it turns out we would have to do uh, three seeds times two apples plus five seeds times four apples plus six seeds times one apple, plus seven seeds times two apples, plus nine seeds times three apples. And I have to yeah. divide by the number of apples. So the number of apples is gonna be, well, it's gonna be the second numbers there. So that's gonna be two plus four, plus one, plus two, plus three. Okay, so let's finish working this out. Three times two plus five times four plus six times one plus seven times two 
plus nine times three. So that's 73. Over, now the apples, two plus four is six, six plus, um, oh, and by the way, that should be 12 apples, right? They actually said it's 12 apples right here. So that should be six plus three plus three, 12. Okay, so we need 73 divided by 12. Now 73 over 12 should be just over six. This is about 6.08. Does that make sense? So I hope that makes sense. A group of 10th grade students resp excuse me, responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down as shown in the table above. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents? Okay, so 19%. Now the thing is, let's do 0 0.19, which is 19%, times 310 because that's going to be 19% of everybody. So 19% of everybody is 0.19 times 310 and that's going to be 58.9. So that's about 59. So we're looking for 59, which is there. Now that should be geometry males. So that's going to be males taking geometry. Do you see how we did that? We used percentages and we located the place on the table of what they wanted. The table above lists the lengths to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error. So there's the 24. Um, of the median, mean, median, and range the values listed, which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is uh, removed from the data. Okay, it turns out median is not affected by outliers that much. The mean would be, and the range would be. Now the range is gonna be either, um, it's gonna be eight if you exclude it. But if you include it, the range is going to be 16. The mean, if you include this, I mean, it is gonna boost the mean up, but not much. Why not much? Because there's a lot of other values. Since there's a lot of others, the range is gonna be the most effective, which is the max minus the min, right? Well, first we have a graph above displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for H hours. What does the C intercept re represent on the graph? Notice that that's $5. Notice that's $5 just to rent the boat, not how much you have to pay per hour. So that's the initial cost to rent the boat. Because that's like if you rent the boat, but then like you get out to the shore and you bring it right back. Like, you know, they're still gonna charge you $5, right? Okay, it says, which of the following represents a relationship between H and C? So between the hours and the cost. Now C is the cost. It's probably easiest to get the cost in terms of the slope here. So the cost would be $5. We already said that in terms of the initial cost of running the boat. But then we need the slope. But notice that if we go from five to eight, the slope equals three. So that's why you should answer this, letter C. Three is the slope, and then five is the y-intercept. Okay. A complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? Well, this is the minimum, right? So isn't that, let's see, 1, 2, 3, x equals negative 3. That's negative 3. Do you see that? For the x value. That's pretty easy in my opinion. In the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities below, which of the following relationships between a and B must be true. Okay, so let's think about this. Zero, zero is a solution. So let's kind of get a little sketch going here. So here's the XY plane. We're just saying that this is a solution. Okay, zero, zero. Now notice, negative X plus A, but it has to be smaller than that. So here's the deal. I deduce from here that a has to be greater than zero. Why? Because the only way this, this point could be um, 
in the solution set when y is less than that is when the y-intercept is a positive value. I hope you can see that because the slope is negative x. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, this other one, that's y is greater than x plus b. Now this is a positive slope, but it has to be y greater than that. So it has to be like this. You see what I'm saying? So b has to be less than zero. Why, how do I know that? Well, it turns out if y is larger, again, we want all these values and we want all these values because we want less than a. The origin is in that solution set. So they want us to deduce something about a and b. Well, a is positive, b is negative. So a is larger than b. Not necessarily just the absolute value. This is more specific. This is the best answer, okay? This is a ghost answer. Absolute value of A greater than absolute value of B. We can actually be sure that, that A is larger than B. In fact, A is positive. Food truck sells salads $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? Okay, so if they sell salads and drinks. They sold um, 209 in one day. This is the amount. And then to get the call, the revenue, it's 650 times the salads plus $2 times the drinks gave 836.50 for the day. Okay. We want to know how many salads. So notice that we don't care about the drinks. So D is equal to 209 minus S. So let's put that in here for D. So that's 6.5 plus two times 209 minus S. So that's, sorry, this is 6.5 S right there. That's an S. So that's 418 minus 2 S sorry, that's an S, 2S, 6.5S equals 836.50. Okay, so first of all, 6.5S minus 2S, that's 4S. Then if we subtract the 418 from both sides, so we should do 836.50 minus 418. So that should be 418 Point five. That's 418.5. And yes, we have to divide by 4. Okay, so we need 418.5 divided by 4. So that's 104.625 equals S. So that's 105 salads. Um, I might have made a mistake, but... Oh, sorry, this was 4.5. You didn't squawk at me. This should have been not 4S, 4 4.5. Sorry. Sorry. That's 4.5. I was going too fast. We're at the end. So we need 418.5 divided by 4.5, which would be, sorry, actually, sorry, that's 93 on the nose. 93. Jeez, I'm sorry. That's terrible. There we go. 93. Okay. All of us can make mistakes. So hopefully you saw how to do those SAT prep problems. I want to thank the College Board for giving us plenty of practice exams that we can practice problems from and give us an idea of what kinds of questions we should expect. If you take several of those practice exams, you'll know what kinds of questions to expect. I don't just recommend you only take practice exams. You probably should also focus on, in math, certain particular skills that you're weak on. Try to improve on those things. Find certain problems that are examples that I worked out. Find similar problems. Try to understand those math principles. So focus in on the things that you need to shore up and your foundation will be strong, you'll be ready for college, and you'll succeed on the SAT math exam. So I want to thank you for watching this video. Please smash that like button if you enjoy this content. Please share this content with those that will need it. Please. Take a look in the description. We have social media links. You can also support us on Patreon. Thank you for watching High Peak Education, and I will see you in the next video.